Hi everyone and welcome to Meet SRU Faculty. I'm Melissa Cerincioni and today I am joined by Criminology Chair Dr. Patrick Harvey, Associate Criminology Professor Dr. David Champion, and Director of Graduate Admissions Brandy Mortimer. Thank you all for joining me today. Nice Thank to be you. here. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to have you. So the Criminology Department is implementing new programs into the curriculum, one being cyber crimes. <laughs> Tell me about these new programs and what you hope that students take away from them. Any one of you can go, whoever wants to we're talk. We're starting to redevelop <laughs> our curriculum. We actually started this term, actually, but we're developing different programs with different disciplines on campus, one of them being actually a fraud examination certificate program. We're looking at potentially doing some other uh, collaborations with computer science, for instance, and in, uh, computer forensics mm -hmm. and those types of activities. Um, through our collaborations with different departments, we're hoping to be able to expand interest for students that'll make them certainly ready to get into, uh, you know, uh, jobs that are available post-graduation, of course. So we're continually looking to be creative and look to meet student demand in those areas. Okay. So on the topic of new programs, your department has just added a new graduate program that is two years long. Um, any one of you can elaborate on this. Tell me what this is about. Sure. I, I, I'm the graduate coordinator. There you go. And uh, the program is about between uh, 16 months to 24 months, depending upon uh, full-time, part-time status. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was created a couple years ago and set off its programs entirely online. Uh, and many of our students are probation officers, law enforcement officers, police officers, correctional folks, uh, juvenile treatment folks. Mm -hmm. uh, and we also have a lot of uh, just full-time students. And so it provides workforce enhancement opportunities for students who are already in the field mm -hmm. and uh, looking to get per perhaps promotion or another credential. And it also provides a good foundation for uh, future doctoral level work as well in, in the field. So uh, right. with its uh, flexibility with the online format, we don't have a, a residency requirement in a 30 credit program with a thesis option and an internship option uh, we found that we've been able to meet the needs of a lot of our students coming through okay now how many how, approximately how many students are in the program now we have approximately uh, 50, uh, 50 in the program right now rotating okay. uh, through the uh, schedule mm -hmm. and uh, we are able to meet those needs with the online format and uh, a lot of times our students will join us even though many are geographically distant they can meet us to go to professional conferences mm -hmm. uh, present papers uh, we have some students coming up who will be defending their theses uh, this year we have oh, wow. other students that are internship programs this year so mm -hmm. uh, there's been a lot of good opportunities for uh, students that we do have as they progress through the program yeah, great. Now, when exactly did you start the graduate program? That was the fall 2010. 2010. And that was when okay. we first kicked off. Uh, okay. And then we've been um, working and retooling uh, and uh, slowly progressing in mm -hmm. getting our name out there and, and letting uh, them know that you know, they have an opportunity to study with us mm -hmm. uh, in a program that is uh, entirely online and not just kind of a hybrid online uh, program. We were kind of able to offer that. Uh, and since we have also uh, a couple of, of uh, electives on community corrections and we have a uh, Dr. Harvey here is an MSW social worker we're kind of mm -hmm. able to bring that aspect to it as well the other programs don't necessarily have as part of their as part of their curriculum right yeah definitely the graduate program in my, in my eyes correct me if I'm wrong it seems more hands-on in the department what it is it's uh, it's very focused on getting students to uh, enhance their writing skills, their academic research skills, right. and their ability to not only learn the theories, because that's part of it too, in the research, and to apply critical thinking to the research, but also mm -hmm. uh, to apply it within an ethical framework or a theoretical framework to their own professions or fields that they're already interested in or, or in. Okay. All right. So, coming up, I'll be talking with Dr. Harvey and Dr. Champion about their current research interests. Hi, I'm Dr. Don Curtis, professor in the Department of Political Science. And that's Saul Sedevic from the Department of Academic Services. I'm Dr. Covey of the English Department. I'm Becky Solomon, the president of the Urban Gaming Club. Dr. Tamara Schiappa of the Geography, Geology, and the Environment Department. Hey, I'm Dave Kershaw of the Department of Political Science. You are watching WSRU-TV. You're watching WSRU-TV. And you're watching WSRU-TV. You are watching WSRU-TV. You're watching WSRU-TV. TV. You're watching WSRU, Channel 27. Mm. 
Welcome back to Meet SRU Faculty. I've been sitting here with criminology professors Dr. Harvey and Dr. Champion, as well as the Director of Graduate Admissions, Brandy Mortimer. All right, so Dr. Harvey, your research of applying integral theory to the study of human harmfulness and violent interactions, what have you found within that? Um, that was part of my early work getting my doctoral degree and my dissertation, mm -hmm. uh, applying what we refer to as integral theory developed by Ken Wilber um, to look at why people who get victim victimized as youth may go on to become victimizers or perpetrators of harm mm -hmm. as, they, as they age and develop into adults. Um, I found different things related to that. I don't want to go into it or bore everybody with that, <laughs> but ultimately the, the standout dimension is of course uh, relating your experience with somebody else and being able to cope with your experience. But that really involves an external source of support and validation. Mm -hmm. For those people that do become victimized who have that type of person in their lives, and research has supported this for years in terms of just maybe a coach, uh, mm -hmm. a parent who's not necessarily abusive or neglectful. Mm -hmm. um, if a person has that type of element in their external environment, their social environment, they're much more likely to be able to disrupt this cycle of violence, which was one of the uh, frameworks that I used through my uh, research. Mm -hmm. um, and beyond that, we also were able to kind of ascertain that there's a, there's a group of victims who are more of the silent or neglected type victims who don't necessar necessarily have an external source of this, we validate what you've been through, mm -hmm. but they're not necessarily modeled into being aggressive either. So this was a group of victims who, as I've found, are pretty neglected even in the, the academic literature in terms of people that become self-harmful, not necessarily mm -hmm. externally harmful to other people in a very overt way. They do kind of overt self-harmful behaviors, which could include anything from becoming involved with um, you know, uh, addictions, alcoholism, uh, chemical dependency, substance abuse, um, to just you know, patterns of uh, instability in their relationships, uh, mm -hmm. inability to kind of follow through with behaviors that might be more, you know, uh, reinforced as positive within our culture. Okay. Um, so this is where my, my current um, interest um, include looking more at that, what I refer to as uh, the less self or moderately harmful victims. Okay. So not necessarily the victims that disrupt the cycle, not necessarily those that go on to clearly be pretty harmful. Mm -hmm. it's, there's a middle group of victims in there that it, you know, are pretty under-researched. Okay, very cool. So, um, Dr. Champion, are you currently researching anything? I'm actually also interested in integral theory and okay. its approach to uh, one of my research lines of interest is using the integral theory, which is kind of a meta-theoretical framework, uh, again, uh, architect of this contemporary philosopher, Ken Wilber. Mm -hmm. And so much of my, my current work has been focused on it also using, because integral theory is such a wide-ranging theory, Mm -hmm. uh, or a meta theory that kind of incorporates a lot of the moving parts of human existence uh, actually in terms of different quadrants of knowledge, social, cultural, individual, um, empirical, intersubjective. Because it's kind of that big wide net, there's a lot of different ways to uh, apply it to different fields. It's been applied mm -hmm. to political science and business and uh, social sciences and natural sciences and counseling and therapy. And one of the things that folks like Dr. Harvey and I and some other colleagues are interested in doing is, 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 is bringing it to bear upon our field of criminology, criminal justice. Right. That's been kind of my focus lately. Okay, so you're kind of trying to implement that into your teachings bring with students. Into the, I, have to, I do bring it into Very the classroom, okay. uh, and um, uh, I, I confuse them, I think, sometimes. <laughs> it's, only because it's kind of a, it's such a wide-ranging theory, you almost need an entire course just to kind of get some of the, the basics down. Right. But, but because the theory is so, again, wide-ranging, it, it's, it, it's just a meta-theoretical perspective. Uh, it's a way to kind of bring it into uh, this, our little corner of academia. Mm -hmm. of criminology, criminal justice, harmful behavior, the reaction of the state, and moral development, cognitive development of, mm -hmm. of folks, as well as physiological development. What does psychology tell us? What does sociology do us, uh, tell us? What, is, what do the natural scientists tell us? What does philosophy tell us? How can we bring these things to bear upon this mm -hmm. problem of, of human people hurting each other and the state's reaction to right. it, which is how I often ta tell my students, that's what we do, that's what we study. We mm -hmm. got, People hurting other people and the state's reaction to it, that's one of the things that, one of the primary things we kind of look at in, mm -hmm. in our field. So this is kind right. of a way of bringing it to bear on that. 
Okay, great. So, Ms. Mortimer, yes. uh, the Director of Admissions, kind of tell me what your role is with that and what you do for students. First and foremost, uh, the most important role that I have is to help students through the five phases of the admissions process. Mm -hmm. From the time they request information, throughout the application process, and then throughout um, their acceptance um, into the programs. Mm -hmm. I work closely with students um, via phone, uh, email, correspondence. I also work closely with the graduate coordinators like Dr. Champion. Okay. Um, and we communicate about the program, updates, changes, so students are informed throughout the admissions process. Mm -hmm. um, in criminology, it is a very marketable program. Right. Students um, are happy that they can complete the program online mm -hmm. um, so they can work and um, get their master's degree yeah. at the same time. Our requirements for the, uh, the master's degree in criminology, criminal justice, um, they need to have at least a 2.5, a 7.5 grade point average. Okay. Uh, they need to complete an essay, three to 500 words, mm -hmm. and also three letters of recommendation are okay. required. So okay. it's a great program. Yeah, definitely, and that's nice that you said that you, because you're the, um, the criminology department is the, I think the department that has the most online courses, if I'm correct. There might be more. Uh, I know nursing has a lot, I'm not nursing. sure. Do we even have a And special ed sure. has a. Special ed, yeah. Right. Special ed, special so, ed. but we're, okay. we're one of the early uh, folks to, to get online um, courses online as well. Yeah, that's so nice, we, because I know a lot that, of people so. who live out of state that are currently enrolled in your program, mm -hmm. that they can go back home, they don't have to live here, mm -hmm. and yeah. it works out for them that way. Sure, and right. that's, we're trying to expand our footprint, too, yeah. in terms of getting the word out to people. Yeah, definitely. How many, um, about how many students are enrolled in the whole criminology department now? Do you know? We have right now about 350 people. majors okay. um, undergrad. at yeah. the undergraduate undergrad. level. Okay. We have quite a few minors. Mm -hmm. We have people that have dual majors. The 350 counts basically first majors. Okay. Uh, but there is crossover with um, some of our, obviously Dr. Champion has talked about, and my, uh, my interest echo his, and, and I think as does most of the CRIM faculty, in a sense that we are firm believers in a, a multidisciplinary approach to our social ills, if you will. So right. uh, when we have students that want to pick up CRIM as a major, although they're already a psych major or mm -hmm. a poli-sci major or a social work major, um, we get a fair share of that mm -hmm. type of student. Um, and we're all kind of behind that type of approach. So we do what we can to accommodate those types of students as well. And over and above our, our majors, our double majors, we have quite a few minors as well. Um, mm -hmm. Going through registration this week, I'm trying to keep a running tab of exploratory people that are declaring their first major final too. So oh, yeah. the numbers are constantly in flux, um, but we're doing pretty stable as a department. We're growing. We're excited. We got young faculty that uh, mm -hmm. are really bringing some uh, just dynamic energy to the table. So right. we're we're trying to stay on the edge, if you will, um, yeah. and, and to progress. Yeah, definitely. That's great. So, the Honor Society of your department, is it Alpha Phi Sigma? Yep. Okay, Alpha Phi Sigma. Tell me more about how this society helps students. Who is in charge of that? You, well, did you mention that that's... Dr. Schantz, uh, uh, young old Schantz, is our uh, director of director. Alpha Phi Sigma. Now, okay. to become a member of Alpha Phi Sigma, you mm -hmm. have to have, I think, a 3.3 grade point average. I'm not entirely sure on that one. Okay. But you have to have a, uh, a stable history of academic excellence. Mm -hmm. um, this is a type of national honor society which really helps students networking, potentially looking for grad schools, potentially going right out into the market for work. Mm -hmm. um, it creates a network, if you will, uh, with, a, with any honor fraternity or society would. Um, every year we have a uh, honors luncheon and ours Coincidentally, is tomorrow. Oh, um, look at that! And um, we will induct our newest members into Alpha Phi Sigma, oh, cool. um, and that again uh, allows them to. I think the real potential is the networking potential for our students. Right. We take our students. We try to. We're, we're firm believers in mentoring, and so mm -hmm. we take them to conferences and we try to get them involved as much as we can in the academic side of it. Right. But the one conference that comes to mind is the Academy of Criminal Justice Sciences. And we do two regional conferences associated with that one, which would be the Pennsylvania Criminal Justice Educators mm -hmm. and the Northeastern uh, Society of Criminal Justice Sciences. And so we take our students to these conferences when able, when funding's there for us, and we introduce them to other faculty members. And there's quite a few practitioners, mm -hmm. uh, I guess was my broader point, at this one national conference. So they can go out there and meet all kinds of different people, people that work in the field of forensics enforcement 
uh, corrections and mm -hmm. you know not just kind of read their books but go up there and shake their hands and you know uh, comment on some of the things that they may have learned through our coursework mm -hmm. so um, we're again and I'm not just speaking for myself or the department here I think every faculty member in our department are uh, true mentors for our students yeah definitely and that's a great experience for them like you said to network and get their name out there and make those connections right. you know so have any criminology students, have they ever gotten the chance to work on a real investigation with what they're studying? Do you have, do you, do you have well, programs Dr. Champion like might that? speak to that, but. Yeah. Well, we have, uh, for example, some of our master's students are, some, we, we do have investigative folks on, on, on that aspect as well. We mm -hmm. have uh, uh, detectives and investigators that are, are already in the field in our master's program. We've had other students go on into investigations whether that would be uh, like military intelligence or into uh, police departments where they've been kind of working their ways up. Uh, and also investigations. We, we do have a criminal investigations class undergraduate. Mm -hmm. and that is a um, very hands-on class. We learn principles. We learn ethics and legal concepts as well, but it's also a lot of hands-on stuff doing proper uh, evidence collection, how to process a crime scene, how to write a report. Uh, so we, we do give some pretty good preparation from that. Mm -hmm. And I, I do have a I do have a background in that myself. So uh, what we've been able to, to do, we have a uh, crime lab scenario where I can, mm -hmm. I, and it's basically a big room uh, that I can set up different scenarios and students learn how to, to photograph. And we got like, you know, furniture in there and broken okay. glass and footprints and blood. You know, oh, wow. it's fake blood. Uh, yeah. No. <laughs> uh, set up and so it's kind of learned that process as well uh -huh. as how to write write a proper investigative uh, standpoint. And I don't know, I not only use the textbooks, I use field manuals uh, from investigative agencies. So I really try to make it as, as a real experience as I can for the students. Uh, so with all that preparation, we have students not only going to law enforcement, but folks who might even go into work with a uh, human service agency and have mm -hmm. to investigate a child abuse case or uh, insurance and do insurance investigations, not only within the scope of what we normally think of criminal justice, but being mm -hmm. able to write to a standard, to be observant, to record details uh, is a good preparation for any kind of line of work where, where folks have to learn how to do that. So I think we give, we give nice preparation for, for that, within that particular class for that aspect of it. Right. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So I wanted to thank all three of you for joining me today. That's all the time we have. Thank you. So thank, thank, you, thank you for you, being Alyssa. here and talking with me. Much. Great. All right. So thanks for joining me on Meet SRU Faculty. Tune in next time to see if one of your professors or colleagues will be on the show. Have a great day.